So here you stand in your physical body, sifting and sorting, doing step one so effectively. And the evolution of all species is about exactly that. Contrast inspires you to want more. So source becomes vibrationally a part of what you have become and establishes a vibrational frequency that you can never separate yourself from. And you can tell that that vibrational frequency exists because you have emotions that tell you that it does. When you feel elation, that's your indicator that you're right now in perfect resonance with that vibrational frequency. When you feel frustration, that's your indication that you are not in perfect resonance with that frequency, but you're not so far off from it. When you feel hopeful, you're closer to that frequency. When you feel love, you're right smack dab in the middle of it. When you feel clarity, when you feel elation, passion, you're right up to speed. When you feel despair, when you feel fear, you're really far away from that vibration. So this is a very important thing to understand. You've launched the rocket and it is part of you. And that source energy part of you from which you came, who always holds you in constant awareness, is holding the vibrational frequency of your greatest becoming of your furthest most expansion but if you don't get up to speed and stay up to speed with that expansion then you feel the gap and that's what negative emotion is so once you understand this now it will be easier for you to understand how simple your work really is it's so much more simple than you have believed it to be Bless your hearts. You've been working pretty hard at life. You observe things wanted and things unwanted and you sift them into piles. Don't want that. Sort of want that. Do want that. And then you try to figure out how to get the wanted piles all around you and the unwanted piles further from you. But what most humans don't understand is that in this attraction based universe, there's no exclusion. So every single time you give your attention to something unwanted and you say, go away from me, it comes closer. Esther had the most extraordinary experience with the two little people that she loves most in all of the world at the San Diego fair the other day in Del Mar, Kate and Luke. Like everybody else, sometimes in alignment with who they are and sometimes not. So they walked into the fairgrounds and Esther said, there's lots here. So if you feel attracted to something, point it out. And Luke said, I'm attracted to that. And it was a spinning wheel, some sort of a gimmick, not really even a game. So Luke spun the wheel and got four tacos which did not please him that much. <laughs> then Kate spun the wheel and got a chance to win a ticket to Knott's Berry Farm. She was not thrilled at the chance or at even the possibility of being there. So the nice man said, spin it again, sweetheart. So she did Knott's Berry Farm again. <laughs> so the nice man said, spin it again, sweetheart. So she did and she got Slurpees at 7-Eleven, which she'd been talking about for days. There are no 7-Elevens in Texas. And then the day began. Esther stood back and watched the momentum of happiness beginning with Kate and the momentum of pain and agony <laughs> beginning with Luke. Because not only did he not win? Kate did. Not only did he not get what he wanted, she got to go three times until she did. So the day unfolded, they were playing games. And the very first thing that happened was they were at a very difficult basketball place. It seemed almost impossible to actually make it go in the basket just kept bouncing back and Luke is really 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 good at basketball really good at it 
So he tried and tried and tried. Esther invested close to his college education. <laughs> and then Kate said, let me try. And it went right in. <laughs> and she got a great big stuffed animal, Pegasus. It was a girl's dream. And Esther looked at Kate, who was not touching the floor. And then she looked over at Luke, who was hanging his head. He was very, 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 very sad. So off they went to the next game. This one was where you throw quarters across the table. And if they land on the right exact spot, then you get something. So Kate got a little thing and another little thing and another little thing. And Luke said, it's like they don't want me to win. <laughs> and Esther is thinking, it's how it feels, isn't it? When things aren't working out for you, it feels like someone's doing it to you. Because when you want something and it's not coming, it doesn't seem possible that you would do it to yourself because you want this thing that you want. So Esther is thinking, I would so like to explain the way all of this works again, right in the middle of all of this. But of course, when you're not feeling good, that's not the time that you're going to hear. And Esther could see Kate spiraling upward and Luke spiraling downward. And somehow they seemed hooked together in some freakish way. <laughs> and so then there was the water game. You shoot the water into the little holes and they all lined up. There were five of them. They all lined up. Kate was on station number two. Squirt, 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 squirt. Number two is the winner. <laughs> Let's do it again. Squirt, 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 squirt. Number two is the winner. Let's do it again. Squirt, 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 squirt. Number two is the winner. Mine's broken. It didn't seem possible that Kate could continue to win, but she did all day long. She had so many stuffed animals. Esther had to make a trip back to the car because they could not lug them all around. So then the reason they've gone to the concert is because train was there. Train was going to presentation later that night. And so they arrive after a long fun and not fun, really funnest day ever and worst day ever. And they arrive at the concert and they're sitting in their seats and a nice man comes up to Kate and says, would you like to go on stage with train tonight? <laughs> And right before that, while they were eating dinner, Luke had said that he knew the words to the train songs and that Mermaid was his favorite. What song will you be dancing with train tonight, Kate? Mermaid. <laughs> so then the concert happened. It was amazing. The stadium was full. Kate was on stage. She got to see this amazing audience. She got to stand next to these beautiful performers she was floating above the ground and now she's back in her seat the concert has come to an end the audience is demanding an encore train comes back onto the stage the lead singer has three t-shirts he throws them into the audience and guess who got one of them <laughs> Kate and so as they were walking out of the stadium, Kate puts her hand in Esther's hand and they are both floating above the ground. And Esther said, that's the way it works, sweetie. You just feel genuine happiness like you have all day and everything flows to you. There was no point in having the discussion with Luke <laughs> because his reality and his observation of it. He had a momentum going. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever had a momentum going where no matter how hard you try, how good you are, how clever you are, how genuinely good you really are, still things are not working out for you. And Esther came away from that experience enlivened like never before. 
because she understands law of attraction she knows for sure about momentum she knows about point of attraction because that's what we're talking about all day every day she knows that the way you feel is your indicator of what you've got going on vibrationally and she knows that you have reasonable control over what you've got going on vibrationally but she also knows that once momentum gets going that that law of attraction is going to continue to feed that momentum we've been talking about this momentum for a while and Esther has been practicing this feeling of getting on that high flying disc we've been talking to you about this vortex that is spinning and now we're wanting to say to you that this vortex is spinning in this high flying high frequency non-resistance and that you've got to be up to speed with that because when you're up to speed with that what's in that vortex flows easily into your experience but when you're down here in despair or in injustice or in unfairness or in fear when you're in desperation you are so far from the frequency of that that even though that is making its way to you it cannot come into your experience you've got to control your frequency and so we've been saying lately that the best way to maintain that high flying frequency is first to understand that it exists next to understand that you can accomplish it next to pay attention when you find it next to pay attention when you find it and to do your best to milk it to keep the momentum going we've been telling you a story for a while that sometimes it sounds to us like you are saying Abraham I've jumped out of an airplane and I have no parachute what do you suggest that I do and we say hang on it will be over in a little while <laughs> because once that momentum gets going there is not an action that you're going to take that is going to do anything about it and that's sort of what Esther wanted to say to Luke all day long hang on it'll be over in a little while because eventually you'll get a good night's sleep eventually something will happen to stop this momentum and because it is not naturally who you are it will not continue but what happens with so many of you is when it starts going wrong that's when you begin to apply your effort but you're applying effort in the midst of momentum that's already gone wrong and in the midst of the momentum that's already gone wrong in this attraction based universe where there is no exclusion every time you shout no at something the universe says here's more of it and that was exactly what Esther witnessed with these darling children they were both getting more and more and more of the momentum that they had established so what is a manifestation anyway you manifest the car in your garage oh that's a manifestation I can punch my hand softly into the delicate side of it, it doesn't make the same sound when I punch it today that it did when I was a teenager but it's real I can feel it I can feel the materialism of it that's a manifestation Abraham or my lover coming to me that's a manifestation and we say we agree manifestation is all of that but manifestation we would like you to begin to regard manifestation as what's happening with you in the moment you just can't get into a place where you're feeling good where you're loving the people of your planet where the people who want to play with you are coming to you you just can't get on that sort of vibrational role without acknowledging these are manifestations and what we want to call your attention to is that the most significant manifestation of all have you been listening to us for a while some of you have for a very long while and have you heard us say yes you've heard us say on endless occasions because we say it every time we get together with you we say it several times every opportunity we have everything that everyone wants or ever has wanted or ever will want is because they believe they will feel better in the having of it they believe they will have a good feeling emotional response in the receiving of this other thing that they think they want and what we want to convince you of is that what you want is the emotion what you want is the good feeling the other stuff's just the justification that you give for having it in other words I want prosperity because I will feel better and I want a lover because I will feel better and I want this because I will feel better I want everything that I want because I believe I will feel better in the having of it and I believe I will not feel good in the absence of it but it is the emotion that is the primary manifestation hear that your emotion is your primary manifestation and if you can